Here we go, we're um, in our familiar seating position. You've seen us in many times before. Um, this time we're gonna we're gonna leave South London and we're gonna see if we can cross the Arctic Circle. We were even posting things off on the way to the ferry port. It wasn't long until we were back on our usual spot where we camped for free on the cliffs of Dover at St Margaret's on Cliff.
Now, our first night away on the trip, official, well, after the first night at, um, on the cliffs there at Dover, the ferry crossing went pretty sweet. We must have timed it perfectly because we literally just arrived, went straight through customs in seconds, queued up for what seemed like five minutes, we didn't even get a chance to finish our cereal before they got us on the boat and we was away pretty quick. We got the Dover Dunkirk crossing just because we'd heard there was loads of holdups at Calais, or there was last week, uh, so we figured if we boxed a little bit clever and got the six o'clock um, ferry, the, that, that was great. Uh, we motored through France, Belgium, uh, Netherlands, and now we're in Germany, uh, just south west of Brenham. Uh, there's a little national or wilderness park or nature park or something. Uh, we just pulled up at, um, kind of like a French style uh, not sure what they call them in in German. Uh, but yeah, it's just it was just a convenient stop, so it was just to, to sleep overnight because uh, there's like tons of motor homes here and. And like we're kind of like the youngest people here, so um, it's nice though. It's, it's not offensive whatsoever, and um, a pretty pretty cool stop off. Uh, most importantly, it got us to catch up on things we didn't get get a lot of time to do at home. Uh, so bike rides with Isaac, um, sitting out chatting, that sort of thing. We're gonna head off today and hit um, Denmark. There's gonna be a ferry that we need to get to from Germany to Denmark and then from Denmark to Sweden. So fingers crossed, uh, night in Denmark, and then the next night will be in Sweden, and then we can start heading north, uh, up towards the Arctic Circle. Got to get rid of all the wheeze and poos and fill it with water again. And it wasn't long before we'd hit our first thousand kilometers. Hi. One way? Yes, please. Uh, there's three. Two adults, one child who's ten. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers, you too, bye. Nice lady. Well, we're now getting the ferry from Germany to Denmark, a place called Puttengarden or something. Uh, obviously, pronunciation was well out there by me. Um, but that means that we're gonna drive across a small section of Denmark, then another ferry to Sweden. Uh, we're gonna probably just find somewhere to pull up in Denmark this evening um, and then head off and arrive in Sweden tomorrow. Every heart is a body part, beat and slow. So I lay on piece of kiss I'm too, you know I love that so. Come on, carry on. And a love settles in my heart, she will grow. All things are living bad, my childhood had made me sad. And she says she'll never leave, the red fronts are constantly. Every heart is a body fight, my baby.
We had a heads up that our friend Martin from Blissmobile was in the area. So, through Facebook, we arranged to meet up. You've probably seen Martin in one of our previous videos when we worked at the XL. It was great to meet up with him again. This guy certainly knows his onions when it comes to overland travel and vehicles. Boy, was it great to reach Sweden. As soon as we got off the ferry, we set our GPS and headed north. When I bought our drinks over, you was almost wearing our tea and coffee. Listen, it used to hurt my ears. Now a lot of people when they travel, they like to check out museums, things like that. What we like to do is kick back in small little villages and towns that are usually built around things like petrol stations. These places are far removed from city life and you get a real feel of what the people are like in each country. While we were passing the town of Mora, we had to call in to check out one of their outlets. We've been using their knives for years and selling them on the web shop too. We usually buy from catalogues and that's not so great. It was real nice to get our hands on everything they made and it gave us a real insight of what products to stock in the future. The Mora stuff is amazing and we had a great time there. Before we started this trip, I often imagined um, forests and wished that we'd just stumble across magical free camp spots by lakes. So 
we need showers now we've got a hot water system but we're running low on water to shower with so we figured we'd just pull off the main road uh, so you could find a river or a lake just to fill up with um yeah look what we found we traveled about six or seven kilometers down a um, forest track but check this out you've got to be kidding me right <laughs> look at this place uh, yep this is what we came for Move it down a bit. Is that? No. Is it no. nice to go like that? that? No! <laughs> oh, the harder it's getting. We've decided to stay out in this, um, by this lake for an extra sort of day or so, just because it is so lovely. Uh, we had some neighbours turn up last night. Uh, I'll say local people, they're from Mora, which is uh, maybe maybe an hour and a half south of where we are now um, but yeah just come into the woods because there's millions of berries fungus uh, tons of foraging stuff to get I don't really know what's edible or not so I'm not I'm not even trying that one uh, but the couple that are next to us they seem pretty into it uh, uh, they've got a caravan and a car and I, I can I can get why Swedish people have caravans. They don't even disconnect them from the car. They use them as like a camper van. Um, so they rock up at cool places like this and and take advantage of you know what, what's on offer to the Swedish people. But yeah, there's just a big like carpet of like it's like a mattress. It's just so comfortable. You can just lie down anywhere. And there's this kind of like uh, I guess it's lichen. Is it lichen or? Um, but anyway, that kind of old man's beard stuff that grows on trees in the UK, uh, there's tons of it. Another thing that couple said were there, um, there are bears in the area. Um, Louise is really afraid of bears. Uh, what was surprising is that they said that there were um, wolves as well. Uh, I didn't realise there were any wolves left in Europe, but that was quite interesting. Uh, we're keen to see moose. We haven't seen any yet. Uh, we've only really headed headed into sort of the wilderness areas now, anyway. Uh, but we did see we did see a deer just um, walk through a neighbourhood in an urban environment. It'd be 
before, that was quite amusing. This one sat here. Five, six, seven. There's like millions of them, look. All. I'm going to check if you can eat those. Um, I'm not sure, I'll check. But if you can, we never have to buy fruit. Me! <laughs> <laughs> With See, a knife yeah. in my hand, bloody hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, those berries from earlier, you can eat them, the blueberries? Blueberries, yeah. Blueberries. There's a picker, there's the expert picker over there. Look. We figured we'd have a ride out on the main road on the bikes for a few miles just to um, just have a look around really but um, check this out the main road this is the first day of yeah, it's quite remote out here actually um, like I said earlier on one of the one of the reasons we came on this trip was to find places like this definitely been um, treated this time. Yours is the first face that I saw I think I was blind before I met you And I don't know where I am, I don't know where I've been But I know where I want to go And so I thought I'd let you know yeah, these things take forever, I especially am slow But I realized that I need you And I wondered if I could come home So yeah, I thought I'd uh, climb on one of these big rocks Take a view, looking for bows Um, I don't know how far we're going to get today, the weather's slightly cloudy but uh, it's to be expected considering where we are. So yeah, it's going to be really sad to leave this place, it was, it was lovely, um, really good unexpected find but here's to many more. Now if you have a van like ours, this is treasure. To anyone else, it just looks like a pile of junk. Especially if you have the four wheel drive version like the one we drive. Gearbox parts are very rare, so finding this haul was a real find. Needless to say, we exchanged phone numbers and we'll be in contact real soon. We've hit Mosquito Alley, uh, there's loads of them. We were. Wow, it just started to rain. Uh, we were expecting quite a lot of them. Um, but we found that if we put green wood at the back of the frontier stove, it smokes like hell. So um, this this is really keeping them away. It's pretty good. Yep, a little bit of green spruce on there certainly gives off enough smoke to um, get rid of them. Actually, can't see any at all now, can you? Oh, 
we're near the start of the wilderness trail in Sweden uh, actually it's hard to imagine there'd be any more wilderness than right here right now but there's a drive that we're gonna do it's supposed to be one of the best there is uh, luckily it's nice weather so that's a win Here's our new favourite breakfast. And they're kind of, um, well, they're like a lemony pastry, Louise. Yeah. They're pretty special, aren't they? Yeah. Louise is just doing the coffee now. So this is why we're here. Uh, there's a road called um, the Wilderness Road. Sounds pretty tempting. I, me I remember reading about it about um, two or three years ago, uh, and one of our followers who's become a, a friend now, Paul Betts and Tracy Betts, they, they suggested that when we was up this way we should try it out as they did it a few years ago and really enjoyed it. So yeah, we were here in uh, Stromsund and then we we head out this way, then west, uh, that's a Norwegian border there, uh, and then you know kind of up and then it brings us back onto the E45 which is the road that's we've travelled right the way up from through um, through northern Sweden basically. I was hoping to pick up a tourist map in town but there doesn't seem to be any tourist information place um, so we've got a Lonely Planet book we'll, we'll use a map that's available in that. Well, we went to the waterfall earlier on. Uh, it's pretty good, uh, well worth the detour. Up some pretty, pretty um, gravelly road. Uh, at the minute, we're wild camping again, just down there. Uh, again, just free camping's pretty, pretty easy to find. Uh, we stumbled across this. Um, I think it's like a game lodge. Maybe it's like a Sami reindeer's place or I don't know but no one's home at the minute uh, it looks pretty cool there's all antlers above my head and stuff yeah we haven't seen any moose yet I'm not sure whether the moose or elk I don't know maybe there's like a an American saying and a and a European saying that's a difference maybe um, they must be round here though because behind me all the little clothes hooks are made of antlers well, that's quite nice um, I'd love to get inside and take a look actually looks like there's some kind of loft um, up there the door's pretty small as well 
all built off the off the floor so they must they must get some pretty pretty deep snow around here we have um, a ritual that we've picked up on this trip uh, we've been playing the Ch uh, Chinese tangrams um, kind of a shape making thing with four blocks of wood that is uh, surprisingly difficult to do um, we've been doing it for about the past six nights it's actually quite quite fun but another thing that we've noticed at night time like now for example it's 11 o'clock at night and it doesn't it doesn't really go dark much <laughs> um, it's staying lighter basically I think we had about three hours darkness last night um, but like I said it, it's It'll be pitch black in um, in the UK at the moment, so check it out. There's a van over there, and the uh, the sky is pretty pretty light still. I'm expecting as we we head north or cross the Arctic Circle in the next sort of day or two or two or three days that this will um, this will continue and, and get even more lighter. Maybe I don't know if we'll get far enough north enough to witness a midnight sun, but that'd be cool if we did. One thing I've noticed about Sweden is you don't see any rubbish anywhere, and uh, not by the side of the roads. Um, or at camp spots, we usually pick up a bit of um, other people's rubbish and, and put it in the trash room before we leave a, a, a wild camping spot. But there's just none around, so obviously it's really important that we take our rubbish away. Um, it, these bin bags stink in the van, so that's why the trash room is so important on any trip. Um, you can fit them to bike racks, uh, but ultimately for the for a spare wheel. Uh, managed to still use ours even with the bike rack on the spur wheel. Um, it's a it's a really good bit of kit and it's something that we've used for many years. I mean, I'm, when we was testing the products, we I left this one outside for a year and a half, so it, it, it's looking really beat up. But I've I've got such fond memories of where I've been when I've used it. I'm very reluctant to to fit a new one to the van. Well, as we started to see reindeer, this meant one thing, we'd crossed into Lapland. Yep, the wilderness road had taken us into Swedish Lapland. One of the really good things about this was that we could visit a traditional Sami village and see how the buildings were made 
and how people have lived through the years in these communities. It was really, really interesting to visit this place. And if you're up this way, I'd definitely recommend calling in and checking it out. You can stay here for a small fee, but as we hadn't paid to camp anywhere so far yet, we wanted to continue and just try and do the whole trip camping in free places. Well, we um, pulled up for a bit of lunch earlier on, just up the road though. Uh, it's pretty nice waterfalls, as you, you will have seen. Uh, and then we just found this other little place here, um, just a little bit further down. So we figured we'd just pull up and camp, as the view was so nice. After an amazing stay, it was time to head off. After all, the Arctic Circle was near, and that's what we'd come for. He's a big sucker, isn't he? After crossing the Arctic Circle, almost immediately we hit our first mechanical issue. It was only a snapped exhaust this time. It happens all the time actually on these trips, it's a real pain. But luckily, we had the reassurance to know that we had full European breakdown cover from Comfort Insurance, just in case we needed it.
Uh, one good thing about road trips like this is it's not always the um, the planned stops that are cool. It's the stuff that you find along the way. And um, this place we could have easily driven straight past it. It's awesome. found another free place to stay um, just drove off the highway slightly down some forest tracks um, this one led we drove down it actually for 20 miles um, and at the very end it, it leads to a, a Sami village that's pretty cool um, but this this is where we are now uh, what it is between like 6 o'clock and 8.30 the mosquitoes come out and they bite you to death actually it's not it's not been everywhere we've been just some some places um, but yeah it seems to be from about six o'clock till 8 30 and then 8 30 for some reason they just completely go I don't know where they go but um, I'm glad when they do <laughs> they're a pain Let me tell you about a little road. It's called the E45. It runs up the middle of Sweden. Uh, it's a road that we've taken from right down south. And the weird thing is, because it is one of the main routes through Sweden, it's you think you get a lot of traffic, which you probably do, but it's such a tiny road and you see so much. At its widest point, it's literally eight steps across. And as well as some pretty small, interesting little towns that you find along the way, it takes you through some pristine wilderness. As you get into wilderness areas, you see little forest tracks going off all over the place. My suggestion is to take those because you find some amazing camp spots along those tracks. Well, as I sit here, eating my breakfast, uh, we're gonna be leaving this amazing road very soon. Finland is literally 10 kilometers up the road. So here's to you, the E45, the best road in Sweden. Cheers. Driving up to the absolute top of Sweden was kind of cool. We'd bought moose stickers when we crossed over the Arctic Circle, but as soon as we crossed into Finland, we saw a shop for the first time in ages. So hey, we decided to get a moose sticker again, because we'd lost the one that we got in the Arctic Circle. 
This is a symbol now that we're well known for, and we've kind of adopted it as our own. I was walking through icy streams that took my breath away. Oh, the midges, Louise. Marvellous. Was a dream, so it seemed. How's this? We're now in Finland and the time is midnight. Guess what? It doesn't go dark. That's weird, hey? We'd heard about this and it's not until you actually experience it that you realise just how weird it feels. Um, yeah, I don't know. Don't feel tired. Um, guess we should go to bed? Yeah, we should. Um, but yeah, re real strange feeling. Um, it's pretty cool though. Well, we've driven some amazing roads so far, but, but this road across the top of Finland, um, leading to the point where Finland, Norway and Sweden meet, really is something else. It's outstanding actually. It's always a sign you're in a remote area when the supermarket car park is serviced by planes that land and take off on water. This um, supermarket at the, near the border of Norway in Finland. I spot this big bag of frozen reindeer steaks. One good thing about having a compressor fridge is you have a freezer. At minus 18 the whole time. The name of the fella, the Everest fella, Hillary. Or is he the not, uh, North Pole guy? I feel like neither. Name of famous explorer. <laughs> explorer. You're much more Dora. Than me. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, Dora the explorer. Thor. 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 Yeah. Something. Let, Thor let's go. Houdini. Pretty nice. Finland into Norway and instantly it's completely different. 
different. Some amazing views. Uh, some snow on the mountains up there, look. Um, last part of Finland, just tons of reindeer, so if you're ever up this way, be careful of those. But yeah, different country, different landscape. So, yep. Let's see what's Norway's got to offer. So we've just uh, crossed over the border. Like I said, we've just come down this road along the top of the ridge there. And then we found a little track by that waterfall that we've come down. And then we found this little wild camp spot. Sweet! Oh. <laughs> oh I've got to say we've we've camped some amazing places before like all over all over the place but this has got to be the best hands down I just can't believe it Chickamonia. Scrambled Chickamonia. <laughs> well, another beautiful day on our trip. I decided to um, take a bath in this mountain um, mountain river yesterday, last night. It's quite pleasant actually, just getting in there, but as soon as you get your head underneath, you just get this big brain freeze. Uh, which was interesting. So with the exhaust still blowing like hell and patched up from back on the Arctic Circle crossover, we headed off into Norway. Like this. 
sorry guys, no smell of vision, but it's uh, reindeer and garlic tonight. Where are you, Isaac? What? Is there a pen there? Woke up early this morning, like three o'clock. This daylight, it's what? I think it's about four o'clock in the morning now. Did a half an hour's work online just to hopefully maybe fall back to sleep again. Cup of tea. But it's daylight, it really is. Um, I don't know, once you're up, you're up. <laughs> Figured I'd go for a stroll. Oh, there's a pretty, pretty neat shelter in there. Not sure what it is exactly. It's all in Norwegian. Maybe someone can translate that. Well, rather than going up, I saw a nice little trail across the coast to the headland here, so I took that instead. Uh, I think that's quite acceptable for this time in the morning. So yeah, I've come over and round the. And this bay here. It's pretty nice. Gonna go up up there. But what I noticed the sunset there last night, which is the west. And then it rises there. But looks like the north. And that is the east where it usually Arises, so that would explain the 24 hour daylight we're getting at the minute. I'm not sure what the hell this is, but it looks like there's bullet holes in there. Maybe it's been at sea and somebody's trying to sink it. It's always great to bump into camper van culture followers and customers. This time, it was Daniel and Thomas. I was asleep on a beach, and they came over and gave us a big hey. Yep, we kicked around a bit, and then we left as friends.
Well, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble summing up Sen Senja, the island. It's Norway's second biggest island, I believe. Pronunciation's probably way out. But I think I think I found my favourite place in the world. A new one. Uh, it's got to be this place. It's just amazing. We spent the day swimming in the sea, eating good food, uh, met a bunch of cool people and the landscape is stunning uh, the weather's perfect uh, we're really we're really high up north um, hopefully this place will stay like this forever but um, they're working on the roads so the infrastructure for people to get here will probably be easier um, but at the minute it's, it's just really unspoiled I mean you know, we're kind of there, camping. Uh, the Norwegians have got this thing about people in tents, they really look after them. So there's a few cars there. Uh, and vans, and then over here, look. Just zoom in. You can just pitch up for free. Same all along the beach there. We'd exchanged numbers with Daniel and Thomas before we left, just in case we needed each other's help. Turns out, in this case, Thomas didn't have the backup we had that we could rely on from Comfort Insurance with our breakdown cover. So, what we had to do is do bush mechanics, repair the van the best we could, just so we could get somewhere so a garage could fix the snapped alternator bracket and do a bit of handy welding. Go on Thomas, give it a wiggle. There's a fixed alternator bracket with the usual cable ties. Yeah. All you need. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Well, it's with much sadness that we had to leave Senja. It was such a such an amazing island, um, and leave uh, Thomas and Daniel. Um, they were such a cool bunch of guys that um, I just wish we could have spent more time with those those people. Of course, I'm really looking forward to some of the new places that we're going to find. So, uh, first ferry in Norway, isn't it? Uh, you have to take this one on the E6. Um, surprising how quick it is, actually. But yeah, we're uh, we're heading south, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so we'll treat this as a 10-minute cruise. Dinner tonight, reindeer, egg and beans. <laughs> I really need to stop eating reindeer. Um, yeah, reindeer free day tomorrow. 
before we came away, there was loads of people telling us how expensive Norway was. Uh, we've been here for one, two, three, like four or five nights already. Um, the truth is, we've not actually spent any money in Norway yet, apart from um, I think we've got one tank of fuel on the ferry crossing uh, ticket. Not sure how much that was like. I don't know. wasn't very much. Um, so yeah, we picked up supplies in Finland before we left. So we all the all the wolf boxes. The middle ones are full of beers because I like beer. Uh, the freezer has got another like eight reindeer steaks in there. We've got a full packet of corn mints that we brought from home in the freezer. And some, uh, I think some strips of pork or something. Uh, we, we brought, in the fridge we've got a lot of um, gammon steaks that had a really long date on them from Tesco. Um, and the back cupboard down the Westie is full of dried stuff, so like crackers, tins of tuna, beans, that sort of stuff. Um, so no, no horrible thing to Norway, but I don't think we could afford to really um, buy stuff in the shops, so we've um, we've brought her on. The other big saving we've made is with um, accommodation. Um, we're still yet to pay for anywhere that we've stayed since we've left London. We've been away for well over two and a half weeks, maybe three now. Um, yeah, we've we've not paid for camping once. The sort of hundred and 20 euro we spent in a supermarket in Sweden then probably another hundred and 130 euro I think in a supermarket in Finland uh, there's been about six tanks of fuel maybe seven since we started Dover Calais crossing was like 100 quid return spent about 300 euro on ferries so far it's actually uh, yeah and like no no camping money or anything so i'm guessing it's probably the cheapest trip we've done anywhere so far <laughs> Another epic camp spot, done and dusted. The temporary fix we made on the exhaust had eventually given up. It totally ruined all of the exhaust mounts, so we just removed the J-pipe and carried on. Because when we make our travel videos we like to get you guys here with us now so you feel like you know you're on the trip with us um, as the landscapes changing pretty quickly we get used to things and we forget to video stuff that becomes the normal pretty quickly well just for that very reason we've stopped over uh, just pulled over and just take some pictures of some waterfalls by the road because there's tons of them uh, and an epic view so this is just for that reason we 
moving well we found this footbridge which is pretty pretty shaky so yeah we're um we're pretty close to the arctic circle border again this time going down through norway rather than up through sweden um again i guess we're kind of kind of going to be sad to leave the arctic circle especially as the weather's been so kind to us and we've just met some really cool people on the way but there's plenty of other places to see yet and we've still got a chunk of time to try and find some awesome camp spots Well, what started out yesterday is um, just a kind of overnight stopover here at the Arctic Circle Visitor Centre. The web was pretty crappy, so we're like, nah, just stay here. It's kind of average. But actually, once the crowds left and the sun then came out, it was actually a pretty nice place to stay. Uh, you could see then all the mountains with the snow, and there's some pretty nice walks around the area. Uh, they were all um, reindeer herds all walking across the top here and actually a big bonus as well is that I managed to fix my flip flop with a cable tie so all in all the sun's out and it was a pretty good stay now time to head south Wow, what a beautiful day today. We've just pulled over. Actually, the one thing I like as much as roadside lunch stops is roadside breakfast stops. We often just get up and drive away from wherever we've camped 
just to get a little change of scenery to have breakfast. We found that in Norway, unlike other European countries where the population is condensed into certain areas and it leaves part of countries with kind of like wildernessy type areas or you know countryside areas where there's not a lot of people around. In Norway, it seems that the population is evenly spread throughout the country and where we'd expected a wilderness like in the north of Sweden or Finland, um, it's not really it's not really here, but there's plenty of nice scenery, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's actually stunning, better than, better than anywhere in that respect, but there are a lot of people around. Um, and we're no stranger to um, having coach loads of tourists um, pull up next to us at a quiet lunch stop. Just everyone piles off, takes pictures, piles on, next, go next place. So, um, yeah, we didn't we didn't get that anywhere else, and it was well, it's not a disappointment, but it's it's not what we expected. After last minute change of plans, I've decided to head towards the coast and do some of the um, some of the smaller islands and get the ferries between them. Just because the weather's so nice and it tends to be a little bit cloudy and rainy inland, so so we figured we'd just take advantage of the nice weather and um, take this route for a while.
Go on, eat your breakfast, Mr. Bean. <laughs> the newest addition to the van was an external food grade water tank. This served as a fortune in soft drinks. It was also good to have the extra water source outside of the vehicle to wash your hands after checking the oil and stuff like that. We seem to make the most of it at ferry ports. Here's another little island that we uh, we keep stopping off, just dropping off one or two cars. But look, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't even think to come to Norway for a beach holiday, but it's amazing, I and mean, there's just nobody here. Again, we we were kind of um, took on board what we read online and stuff about Norway being expensive but these ferries are pretty reasonable we've just done well I don't know how long this is going to take this ferry but it was 24 pounds and we've been on it for like 40 minutes already um, at two stops at two different small islands so they're actually pretty reasonable if not cheap This bit of road is nuts. There's literally like one stretch of tarmac that heads along the coast of the mainland and you just can't get to it any other way apart from on and off a ferry. Um, yeah, it's weird actually. Um, so yeah, just got off one ferry a minute ago and we're on another one right away. Crazy clear water. So we found a nice little pull in next to um, a waterfall uh, which went out into the fjord. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, I think we're getting a bit fussy about where we stay now because there's been such nice places that when we find somewhere kind of average we're a bit reluctant to pull in there in case there's something better further along but um, actually when you really look at it it's if this was in the UK it'd be like the top wild camping spot but because there's so many nice places in Scandinavia um, you become pretty pretty immune to how awesome they are
breakfast and a little pulling. Uh, I noticed a little little interesting building over there by a lake, so we're gonna go and check that out while Louise is doing the breakfast. Bad hide. Is there, not, is there an upstairs, is there? Yeah. Oh, creaky. It's so creaky. It's good. I love how they've used soft scoop ice cream as their. My hair is in a spider web. <laughs> This is Flacken Nature Reserve. Um, looks like there's quite a lot of bird life here, according to the um, information board. Shall I? Shall I go and get a pen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll just go and get a pen. Hell yeah. Westphalia? Really? After driving a few hours through some pretty boring farmland, we'd finally got back to the environment that we love so much. Mountains and forests is where it's at for us, so we found this little sweet spot by a lake and hung out there for an evening. However, there was no time to laze around for too long because the area where all the huge fjords were about to start and boy were we pumped for this. As we got nearer and nearer to fjordland we came across some real cool places to stop over and have lunch. We had a good discussion about how lucky Isaac was to not be in constant internet access during this trip. However, his opinion was it's like hell for a ten-year-old. <laughs> Go figure. Stupid wishy's not working. took the E39 west, uh, just hit another ferry, can't believe how warm it is, so even though it's overclassed and all, overcast and all the um, little clouds over the mountains, it's, uh, it's pretty warm. The landscape's changed again for the better along the E39, heading west, it's, um, it's gone from that kind of boring farmland that went on for about four or five hours yesterday back to mountain scenery and forests and stuff I've seen this bridge on Google Earth yeah I have
Oh, step. <laughs> Push the on in. <laughs> As our journey across Norway continued, we'd started to bump into people who recognised us. I have heard you are on Facebook. Some pretty um, expert fishing straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it gone? Is it gone? gone. Oh, no. That's the macro. Yeah, it looks like a macro, I think. Oh, oh it's oh. a big one. That's a big fish. <laughs> That's a big one, big macro. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest mackerel I've ever seen. You can have it. Yes, yeah, that's good too, right? <laughs> Check the size of that. You're not squeamish, are you? <laughs> well, what turned out to be just a stop at the side of the road because we've been driving for quite a while yesterday. Um, we've entered sort of fjordland, really. I've been speaking to a guy called um, Jens, a German guy who's... I uh, took up residence in Norway some 15 years ago. Uh, he's with um, his, his girlfriend's a local girl, Norwegian girl. Um, so I gave him a text just to say we're in the area. Turns out he lives kind of like an hour away. Such a generous guy. Um, he, he turned up, like gave us loads of German sausage, German beer. Uh, he gave us probably maybe slightly controversial who knows but uh, he gave us a big piece of whale meat uh, he gave us a really cool book on Norway um, all kinds of cool stuff such, such a generous guy um, but the biggest thing that he did give us was he gave Isaac a life skill and an interest for fishing yeah, I love the way he just kind of turned up and um, he didn't bring his van with him. Um, he had to come over the mountain, so he came in the car. But I love the way he just sort of came, turned up and then fishing gear in the back and casually was like, oh, I've got the rods from in. Oh, a massive big mackerel. Yeah, it's very good. It's like a whole fight, really like casual kind of thing. But um, actually the, the mackerel was like... Kind of that big, you'll see in the video anyway. Um, but yeah, it was it was bigger than anything I've seen in the UK, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, Isaac was was kind of really interested in that. So um, and he gave us he gave us his or oh, he had a couple of rods in the back, but yeah, he he, he hooked Isaac up with all the all the sea fishing gear he'll need for a very long time, including rod, reel. Uh, those spinner things, uh, so, like again, so, such a generous, such a generous guy, and, and such a nice, nice fellow. It, it does go to show that you can be in a a place that you thought weren't that interesting at first, but the the people definitely make the places that you stay. So this morning we're up early, we're going to do the infamous zigzag road which is, uh, you see in all the, all the brochures, so the area is actually stunning, uh, but we've sort of um, 
a really low cloud. So I don't know whether we're actually going to see anything. Um, but we, we can't control the cloud cover. Uh, maybe hang on a short while, but um, yeah, we'll we'll give it a stab. doing this in the uh, cloud but I really think it just adds to the whole drama of the experience I believe the view is amazing from up here. Um, for any of you who really want to see what it's like, here's a picture. The more miles we were getting under our belt, the more camper van culture followers and subscribers we'd meet on the road. I've got to say, we were starting to really enjoy this.
taking the old 258 road uh, rather than the tunnel uh, takes us over the mountains um, it's amazing absolutely superb just everything I could have ever wished for in this trip is um, has been achieved today really with um, with the landscape it's exactly as, as I imagined it was going to be actually it's better Been out early this morning. Um, the weather seems to be changing a little bit. Uh, clouds coming in. Um, we don't want to be in a white out like we were yesterday on the um, paved roads. We've got 24 kilometres of dirt track to drive. Uh, some pretty pretty steep um, edges and stuff like that. So we don't want to be driving off those. So so we're gonna we're gonna head off. Um, but yeah, wow, what a place. We'd been out in the sticks for quite a while by now, so we called into the small town of Strin to pick up much needed fuel and supplies. The weather had turned bad, but that didn't stop us finding a glacier to go and climb up to and see. Right, we've got the wet weather gear on, because the weather's bad and we're going to go and find a glacier. Ready Isaac? Um. Just a short hike, so uh, we're going into GoPro mode.
gotta say there really is something about the the power of water when you see it flow in such big volumes like we have the the last couple of days it's it's pretty frightening actually at times to see Well, I don't think we've had it for a while. More ferry action. He needs a camper van culture one, doesn't he? He hasn't even got one on. Long drives had now taken a new interest for Isaac. Whenever the opportunity arose, it was out with the fishing rod, all thanks to our good friend Jens. We've just driven from sea level to 1,260 metres. I can't believe the van's just done it. Uh, we've got chicken switch fitted, so that went on early. Uh, and the heater matrix under the back seats helped. Like, it's quite hot in here now, isn't it? Yeah. We've just got all the heaters on. Um, I didn't video coming up, because I just, at the beginning, I figured, oh, it's just another windy road, but God, that's the that's the biggest climb we've ever done, I reckon. So this is the top. Um, and that's the road down there. Uh, that's after it stopped climbing up from sea level. It's a fjord down there. Oh, it's some climb. I feel like my breath just driving. Maybe it's because the air's thinner here. I don't know. But um, yeah. I forgot to get bloody firewood again at um, one of the trees. We're above the tree line now, so... Let's look for... Look for something if we're gonna... If we're gonna have a fire later on. It's pretty remote up here, so it should be okay. This is... This is the road we're on now, the 55. I'm guessing. It's a tourist route. This place. Guessing that's the maybe the climb up. Well, it was that time of day that we'd look for somewhere to pull over and camp. Boy, was this place nice, and we were hungry. Being a hot chili sauce. Well, Norway certainly is a country that keeps on giving. Uh, yesterday was, was amazing again, just um, seeing those real big glaciers and 
uh, being again up at high altitude we started coming down pretty quickly afterwards and uh, found this place at the side of the road um, it's a it's a camping area free one set up for people to enjoy uh, it's got some pretty interesting seating areas um, built in a quite an interesting style um, kind of concrete and wood mix but looks really really actually looks quite quite excellent um, some, some real some real interesting ones around so yeah we're um, we're pretty pretty happy with Norway again <laughs> and like I said it is it is a country that keeps giving just as you think oh, I'm out of fjord land like we were yesterday and that all the all the kind of interesting scenery is done with and and then you just drive down a normal road like this or like, like we've driven yesterday and you, you're still finding cool things all the time It was time once more to hit the road. It wasn't long before we'd bumped into a couple of guys in a van that were waving at us like crazy. We wondered who the hell it was and realised it was our customer Sean. He'd just been round our place a couple of months previously to have an ARB awning fitted before he'd set off around Europe on a big grand tour. We had no idea he'd even be this far north but we were pretty pumped to meet up. We'd been wanting to find a genuine stay of church. We're pretty excited when we came across the town of Fossheim. It's pretty interesting actually. We didn't realise just how old these things were, but it was real privilege just to get up close and have a look round. We love stuff like this. It was excellent just to have a walk around the place and just get a feel what the architecture was really like with these old churches. It actually ended up a pretty nice place to visit. It was with much sadness that we had to leave Norway. But we still had a little bit of Sweden to go and that had some real nice surprises in store for us. been travelling we've seen many places that are really beautiful that we could see ourselves living but it wasn't until we'd found this amazing place stick with me guys here on the pronunciation 
have stensoned. This place was amazing with its beautiful buildings and its lovely little harbour. This place was paradise. Just for a moment we'd sat back and looked at this amazing place. We'd really considered moving all our stuff, everything from campervanculture.com, even Dan, get everyone here and just live the good life. You know when you find things and it's a little bit of heaven? I think we just did that. Oh, I just flipped it over. Oh, I make a better splash on the rock. Oh, Jenny, it landed on its back. Oh, come on. Well, it was tangled up in seaweed ten minutes ago, so its life has definitely improved. Oh, uh, look, he's, uh, he's flipped over. <laughs> With all this fresh in our mind, it led to one question. Why wouldn't you ever want to come here? Full of amazing memories, we left Sweden and headed to Denmark. Well, we left Sweden, uh, got the ferry, now we're back in Denmark. Um, gonna go and see my friend Jason, a uh, bit of a van nut. He's got all kinds of stuff squirreled away at his place, so I'm gonna go and check out what he's got, uh, say hi, uh, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so we're kind of heading, heading back now. I've uh, still got a few days left, so it's the trip isn't over by any means. We've still got a whole bunch of places we've we've never been before, uh, so we'll we'll know about those when we find them. Ready? Mm -hmm.
It was great to call in and see Jason, but ultimately there was a reason why we came to see him. He was going to show us around somewhere that was near his place. This involves the next part of our life at campervanculture.com. Yep, things were going to change a little bit and we wanted to check out our next project. And that's to build a go anywhere expedition vehicle for a long, long trip. Boy, that video's going to be epic. That said, I think Isaac could be pretty happy with the golf. Do you like that car? Yes, wonderful. We uh, found another cool little spot in Denmark. Uh, it's by some lakes. Uh, we camped up there in the forest, and there's a there's a little swimming area over here, I think. So we're going to take a bath. Yesterday evening we saw some, um, some pretty cool wildlife actually. There was loads of deers running around in, a, in an area. We also saw a snake and um, that was probably quite unusual. Well, that was nice. One thing's for sure, our bathtub at home is going to feel pretty small after this trip. And if you're still breathing, you're the lucky one. Because most of us are heaving through corrupted lungs. Setting fire to our insides. Careful. Sun don't help. After heading to the coast, Denmark suddenly got even more interesting. We found the island of Romo. Well, it's spelled R-O-M-O. -O. Again, pronunciation will be well out, but you get the gist. This place was epic.
Well, we're now back in Germany. We spent a couple of nights in Denmark. Uh, actually, Denmark turned out to be a pretty cool place in the end. We're staying at this little place here, little little town. It's pretty nice, actually. Watermill over there. Uh, obviously, this this kind of pond's related to that. Um, there's a free free motorhome uh, camper van stay area over there which we took advantage of and now we're gonna go and meet Daniel our friend at OEM Why don't you Very good. places we've been so far Isaac had found his Nirvana it was basically sat on Daniel's loading bay hacking into his free Wi-Fi my idea of a holiday is just this huddle on green giant open torch there scrambled egg We filled up at OEM with water, ready for the next stage of our journey. That would be the journey home. Well, we're uh, going to head to towards Calais this morning. <clears throat> uh, it's about kind of six hour drive, non, you know, if we did it in one hit, which would be longer in the van. Um, we just had a, um, a text from the ferry company to say that the truck drivers are doing a um, rolling protest. So, it sounds like there's going to be an absolute massive um, chain of trucks to protest against the immigrants in Calais trying to jump the trucks and um, they're standing for the, the right to, for something to be done about that which is fair play actually because it is getting a bit of a situation over there um, so yeah we're going to see if we can leave a day early and get on an earlier night ferry because tomorrow the roads are just going to be completely blocked and there's no way we'll get on the ferry tomorrow if, if we did leave any later so um, yeah we're going to leave Daniel's place now and and head off towards towards home Whoa, this is one mother of a storm so much rain on the floor just wasting a bit of time really uh, before our ferry tomorrow I thought I'd go for a cycle around Calais uh, seems pretty legit people and families just having Sunday dinner uh, one thing that really did shock me was when we um, drove into Calais and saw the refugee camp um, it looks like you'd imagine the Gaza Strip there's kind of well, you can see some of the fences up now with razor wire all around to keep to keep those people away from. Well, I'm ashamed to say regular people. Um, it's terrible, really. Those what those people must be going through to to get here and then having to live like that is is quite disgraceful. But it's a huge problem. Um, it's one that I well, I for one don't know how to sort it out, but. Uh, something definitely needs doing about that.
that's it, another trip done and dusted. Uh, another place that that we always wanted to go and make a video at. I always hate this part of uh, any video when it's a kind of signing off of of the um, the whole trip. But you know, we're, we're going to be back soon, and we're going to be making another travel series. And uh, big, big thank you to all of you guys that made this happen.